You're listening to the Tales from the Grip podcast. podcast. If you're going to make a movie, then you need to get a grip. You need to get a grip. This episode of Tales from the Grip is brought to you by the Colonel's Goes Pop Popcorn. And we will move on to my host, myself, Mr. Green, and my pro. If you've been paying attention to this show for any length of time so far, you know that the objective here is to get you some information, whether that be you as a fan who just happens to be a cinephile or you as a amateur entering into a new profession, right? You have to have somebody that's going to give you the information on what hurdles to jump, what manholes to maneuver yourself around, and what have you. What better way to do that than to have somebody like me sit up here and ramble on and ask a professional what exactly how they got into the business and what it is that they do. And my pro, Dietta West, a.k.a. the original Mama D, (laughs) the pro for this episode, Mama D, Dietta West. Thank you. I'm just so tickled. I, you, you are a mess. Oh, okay. Uh, let me let me be nice. Let I, I, me be nice. No, I'm, I could be a mess. You know, I'm, I'm all over the place. Yeah, you know, because when you said I played your mother, and I said, okay, now you have not <laughs> yeah. lost your mind yet. Do do you remember? And I knew that I the, the role. Then when you cleared it up, mm. and I'm like, how could I not? How could I forget that I played his mother? Because I'm sure <laughs> the scene would have caused me to hit him upside his head yeah. or to, to cuss him out or something like that. I don't know. He, he just went right into your mental database trying to figure out, like, when did I play his mom? I right, right. I'm like, no. But anyway, thank you so much, Mr. Green. Yes. And t- <laughs> See, it all ties together. You see that? Go to the IMDb page. Mrs. Green was in The Glorious. Yes. And I am Mr. Green, so there D- don't 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 be confused about no. anything he's 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 saying he is mr green i played a miss green no she didn't green. play my mom okay yeah. i just okay. wanted to be able to say that right right so we love that but thank you for having me today and i'm just excited about this time to just chit chat with you and glean from some of the stuff you're going to be dropping on today <laughs> <laughs> well you know i always enjoy having a guest that will uh, allow me to bounce and, and be able to bounce back with me uh, again being able to share nuggets of your career that also relate to some of those young fresh faces out there that are trying to get where you are now mm, yeah well so I am going to jump out of a sequence because I are, you know, before this, you know, you may find it in some bonus footage floating around here somewhere. Before this began, we were uh, chit-chatting about some of the stuff that she was doing, and one of those things was Static Shock, which, you know, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I just, I have to, I got to ask because I just, you know. You I, just I, got I, it. I, I, I was it. just shocked. I was beyond static shock to, to know that that you dug that deep and and it's very interesting because I did do vocals on that and it was just put right into the, the studio and did what we did. I, it was so long ago. Mm-hmm. I, I have to just remember. Was it Warner Brothers? Do you, that was yeah. Warner Brothers. Yes, yeah. correct. Okay, so um, it was a. I just remember it was a fun time and it was a group of voices. I can't even remember. Which episode? I couldn't tell you the lyrics. Oh, you about to roll it up on me, though. You're about to. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to roll it up. I'm not that good to just pull out the episode season. And, you know, sometimes I can do it, but, you know, the, my database is a little jumbled mm-hmm. right now. But, no, I mean, just the fact that you did that, I mean, uh, my question just, you know, for general purposes, when you, you said you booked in a group, or did you book that separately to go in and, and do the collectively do the voice for the you know? If singers? I can remember, because of the fact that I've always been in that before I went into not so much full time acting, but uh, pursuing that area of the talent, the gifts that God has given me, mm-hmm. um, people would come to me at times to say, uh, "We need a choir, or we need some voices. Um, we need." two altos, two sopranos, two bass, and two tenors. Can you provide that? So that was 
during that time where I would say, okay, yeah, how many voices you need? I can, I can, uh, yeah, I can do that. I can find that. So that we were booked as a, a group. I think I probably was singing not soprano. I'm, I was singing alto at that time. Now, as the seasons and the years have gone by, I am singing tenor and, um, they use tenors. They, they love seeing women sing tenors, being tenors. I don't know. I don't know if that makes you sexy or something because you sound like a, a man. I don't know. Don't get me started on that. That's not what this podcast is about. D- different strokes. For we'll, we'll, right. we'll, just, we'll just leave it at that. Right. Leave but, it right there. But uh, just sort of, we'll, we'll demystify some of the uh, the process. I know uh, there are often times where they say, oh, we just get everybody in the room together and they put on the microphone. And then there's cases where all this may be separate, and they just kind of edit that together as it goes on. Did, mm-hmm. did you interact with the cast at all, or did they just, uh, hey, guys, we need you to come in here and do your thing, and then we'll just layer it into the, the audio mix when this is done? Never saw the cast. Never saw the cast. We just, we just went into the studio and laid down the tracks. See, that, that is not uncommon. That is a, what a lot of animation mm-hmm. series do. I think... I'll, Maybe with the exception of some principal uh, characters, I think they, mm-hmm. they stick them all in the room. But I, I right. just, uh, I enjoyed the show. Did you know what the what the product was when you got it? Or? To be honest with you, no, I did not. I really? did not. I just knew it was Static Shock. I never really, I probably, after it came out, mm-hmm. you know, I just kind of saw, but I didn't get into it like you. It didn't become a part of my viewing pleasure, you know. Well, I, I will say this for those that may be interested in it before we move on, because I, I just had to hit that note just because it's on your resume. Mm-hmm. Because, again, yeah, man. Right. But, uh, yeah, the, the uh, series is based off a comic book, uh, which was originally just called Static. Mm-hmm. Uh, created by Mr. Dwayne McDuffie, who did a line of comics where the black hero is the lead. Mm-hmm. Which is the first time I'd ever seen that, which is what got me into it. So he has, you know, for those comic book fans out there, <laughs> I, Icon and uh, Hardware and Static. <laughs> so, you know, that that was, in that community, it was a big deal mm-hmm. to, you know, see a character that looked like you. Right. And I so. totally get it. I, t- I understand that. So that's, that's what captures, even if you didn't like the storyline, I think in life for all of us, even if you didn't like the movie or the series, but it had someone that looked like you, you know, and I, yes. then you'd just watch it because you were watching it to wait to see when is that that sister, that brother going to come out. If they, <laughs> if they only had one line, you were satisfied with the fact that they were in this series or, uh, you know, just what you said. And mm-hmm. that's what draws us. And that and we can fast forward that to today. Fortunately, we're seeing more of us we should be seeing more of us, but the fact that we've come a long way, baby. Yes, and a long way to go, but we've come a long way. Well, well you, you've heard me have a little fandom moment here. Now I'm going to ask you: uh, Did you have that TV show, that movie, that that thing that inspires like that, or that person? Now I want to, I want to be able to do that, or I want to, you know, I want to play that part or whatever mm-hmm. the case would be. Some, uh, some a character or actor that inspired you like, hey, yeah, I, I, you know, I can Julia. and should. Julia. Really? The, the television Di- series. Diane Carroll. Okay. Now, now, wasn't she the first lead black female for an for re- ongoing series? Yeah. I, I said, ugh. Now, we talked earlier about people saying they want to be like you when they grow up. Mm-hmm. And I told you what my back, what I feel about that statement. People need to be careful when they telling somebody, "I want to be yeah, like yeah. you." You, we, we, we you talk gotta about take that. all of it, not, yeah, not just right. the good. Not just the good. You got to be where I am and to be like me. You got to go through. We all go through. We go through our valleys. We stand on our mountain tops. We go through our disappointments and our struggles. We go through depression. Now I'm going on a whole different. Rem- <laughs> Let me get back to this. That's a whole nother workshop, which we might get to before we end. We but, might. Um, uh, that in its up, Julia was like, uh, she was my queen, and I wanted to be like her when I grew up. Not that we were that 
far apart in age, mm-hmm. but meaning in the real scheme of things, her age during right. that time when she filmed that. But that was that was pretty much her. And then, of course, I have to always say, uh, watching my brother and living in a household with someone who has always been talented, even before he became a, a bigger talent, the, the celebrity. Mm-hmm. Um, I could tell you some Sidney Poitier. I just, oh. that man, and I so honored to be able to meet him earlier in in life you know um when i say earlier like several decades ago and to be able to to be in his presence and just to look at him man he didn't have to even say hi to me you don't have to say nothing i don't even need to take no picture with you just the fact that i'm this close to you to just to look at you so sydney portier just mm. well, well you know that's that's a very interesting thing because I, again, we just talked about having to, you know, or wanting to see somebody that's on screen that looks like you, inspires you, and what have mm-hmm. you. I think some of that gets lost on younger viewers now. Not to knock them or anything like that, mm-hmm. but, you know, there's kind of a sense of it's always been, you know, because, and, and, and in fairness to them, they haven't witnessed that. They haven't mm-hmm. witnessed where. 90% of the TV is white male or something like right. that. So when you say uh, Julia, the TV series, which was a rarity at that time, mm-hmm. you know, seeing um, Michelle Nichols on Star Trek yeah. or yes, you yes. Know, ju- just the various people who were kind of sprinkled in throughout mm-hmm. the show, mm-hmm. I don't know if you could really put into words how important that was uh, during that era? It was very important because many people have asked me um, when in interviews, when did you first know that you or anybody in your family detected that you were going to be in the entertainment industry? And, that, and I tell them all, I said, when I came out my mama's womb, because back in the day when a baby was born, they tapped that, they tap your behind Mm -hmm. you know and uh so you'd start crying to get air get your lungs going and all of that i came out hollering and my i came out and they just i my if my mother were here to say she just i just knew she was going to be somewhere trying to get somebody's attention other than her family because she i was a baby Mm -hmm. so i did get all the attention that i needed desired and wanted and was so happy about it being the baby and Mm -hmm. spoiled but um for, for me that has always been through elementary school through junior high school you know they have now they call it middle school they have all the different but it was elementary school junior high school and high school and I always knew, even in my earlier years, elementary school, that it was just something that I wanted to do. So I zoomed in on television. And back then, you weren't, things weren't censored so much, meaning there wasn't so much garbage on TV that your parents had to watch and had to uh, program it so that you couldn't oh, yeah, watch no. certain networks and stuff uh, like that. You could watch TV all day long. Yeah, television was a very communal process at the time uh <laughs> whatever dad was watching <laughs> that that day i was going to be watching exactly you know, i didn't have a choice that we hey the cabinet's on click R- right <laughs> you know <laughs> everybody's going to look at that so right. it had to be safe right for everybody right and so back when i was coming up it it pretty much was always safe uh, yeah yeah that's what i mean because like i said i'm much older than the new but it was always safe and you didn't have to like we some of the parents have to do now program because they have cable they have all of that and the kids it, you yeah, you're not streaming to services that. and yeah, so on so which you know, has no real regulations underneath it but yeah. right right but it still <laughs> doesn't matter you watch a lot of things right <laughs> so for me i just watched it all and so when i would see back to your original um question when i would see the, the Diane Carroll, when I'd see a, a black person, male or female or child or whatever, and if it was a series, 
that may have been that person may have only been in two series, but that's how they hooked me. So this little girl was going to sit and watch every season, every series, because I wanted to see that person that looked like me. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Look at that little boy. Look at the little rascals. Original. Yeah. Look at um, Homeboy. That well, because it was Spanky. There was Alfalfa, and there was my, what was oh you remember? Boy. Buck, yeah, how could I not forget that? Because <laughs> they gave that crazy name. Buck, okay, we yeah, yeah, they did. I mean, yeah, you had a lot of that 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 went on where you know <laughs> somebody got a weird title kind of uh, yeah. thrust on them. Yeah, and I don't think we need to go. In, I mean, you we, can look we, at yeah, the right. Mash movie, and I mean, they had a have. doctor, Spear Tucker Jones. Come well, on, yes, yeah. that's a real thing. I'm sorry. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah, and that may be one of the reasons why I used to always, why? Because Mash, when I first got into it, and then I, that turned me off. I think that instead of that me being, oh, I see someone that looks like me. I don't care. <laughs> Because I was a little more, a little older, mm -hmm. with the little rascals, y buckwheat understood. didn't hit, hit. Yeah, but after you get, what do they say? You woke now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you you probably didn't get it. Well, I mean, I, I will say this: that I don't think he was ever portrayed horribly. He did get the, he did have to portray the scared black kid mm -hmm. you know yeah, and, right right and then by eyes bucking. yeah he had to do that and that and then i was younger so i that was like oh my oh my goodness you know so yeah. i loved that i'm just like just the way you see me grabbing my oh and i'm just looking at the tv like that and oh my god and when you like i said the rascals and there's some other ones i have to dig deep in and this is interesting because with us talking about this, seeing that person that looks like us, the, that black man, black woman, my color, that mm -hmm. in there. The, I, the, I started back going to, um, I renewed my membership at Jim because I kind of uh, froze it and, or just canceled. I'm switching reels, but I'm still on the same subject. I got you. Um, and one of the reasons that attracted me to the gym that I'm going to uh, is that they have a room, a huge room, with a big screen in it. You think you're in a movie theater, and in that room, it's it's dark. The only light you see is from the screen and from the monitors that are on the treadmill, the um, what is stationary bikes, mm -hmm. and the elliptical. Which I, you ain't gonna lip me on that call. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it one time. I said, get your little old behind off of this. Anyway, let me rewind back to what I, where I was going. So to fast forward, now I probably, this movie I'm about to tell you, I probably watched it then and saw this black woman and she was a maid, mm. but it didn't, I saw her in Gone with the Wind. You know who I'm talking about? Hattie. Um, that's it. That's it. Hattie. McDaniel. Yeah. Anyway, yes that, okay. and so and so that was like oh look at that okay i wasn't real woke then mm -hmm. but fast forward i haven't seen that movie in forever i just had no desire but but i was in the screening room and back in the day before i froze my membership and they used to have the movies screening so i would stay on that tread for an hour and a half i was going in and if i walked in there and i'm most times i would be the only one in there because most of the people that work out in gyms they want the women and men they want to be out flexing and showing their body and <laughs> <laughs> whoa look at sister over there she's getting her uh, together but anyway so I, I digress i'll go i won't talk about that but so i would go into this big screening room and if there was a movie on that I didn't want to see, I'd go out to the front desk and I'd say, can I watch a different movie? And they would say, oh, sure. They'd come, front desk would come in there, the remote. He said, what do you like? You like Netflix, Hulu? They'd just say, I said, just put it on Netflix and let me see what, what genre of movie. I'd tell them, they'd go there. So I was kicked back. Okay, I want to see that one. And they put it on I'm gone I'm gone so anybody that would come in there they wouldn't care they would just watch whatever I had on they They're didn't join in progress yeah, right. yes right but now they got new ownership mm -hmm. and a new thing 
every week is posted Monday through Sunday, the movie, the one movie that plays all day. So I didn't look at the little, I'm going somewhere with this. I didn't look at the little um, schedule. So I go in there and I get myself all hooked up, get my water in position and boom, boom, push, start and do the whole thing, put my mileage on it and I start doing it and I look up. I said, oh, they got this black and white. I said, and then I saw Hattie walk out. It was gone with the wind. They were they had that movie. Really? I'm shocked. The oddest thing. I'm you shocked. <laughs> so like oh, of all the movies they had to pick from. I said, What these new yeah. owners owners in here said to throw in something like that? and I look and normally even if it's a movie up that I don't like and I can't change it. Mm. I just because I know that I would just keep working out, and I just then I'd get into the movie. But when I saw that one, and I saw her coming out, and I was booked, and she was talking to, her and I said, I respect her mm. because she did what she did. Yes, she did. She brought some some color and a l little bit of diverseness to the, but it didn't set with me mm. at that. Not her, but just yeah, the just fact the, that the character. And I said. I, this is crazy. I think I got about 15 minutes, 20 minutes into my walk. And I said, I don't know if I can just do this. I need to stay on this tread. And then this guy walked in. And he got, why? Out of 12 treadmills, nobody's in there but me. Why you <laughs> come mean, stand by me? <laughs> let me get this one right here, right next to you. And I said, mm -mm. pause. I hopped off, I grabbed my water bottle. I went out. I actually left the gym. That thing stuck, stuck like right here. Mm. I'm saying all that to say is there. You when you fast forward to now, there's some of the things that I I don't even want to watch, even new stuff. Mm. I hate to put it this way, but there are movies that that are amazing that tell a story, and some people need to to see see it. But I'm kind of tired like another friend of mine mentioned to me and I won't say her name but she's an amazing writer and producer and director I don't want to see any more slave ship movies I don't want to see where that's painful to me I don't want to see any more of my people even though it's on this it's a movie being beat mm -hmm. I don't until they're the, I don't want to see, I don't even want to I don't even want to write that kind of stuff I don't want to direct it I don't care what they're paying. I don't want to do. And I said, wow, is that what, that's what's going on with, with me. You know, I'll do a period piece, but it's really not a period piece because they're, we're living it now. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Because the, the uh, venue by which the trauma has taken place has changed, but the trauma is still there. That, that's probably the best way I can put it. Moving on. We, we, we have uh, gone into <laughs> black faces in cinema. You know, we, we did, this is some, some bonus material here. I wasn't expecting to, to get this in. Me, me either. I wasn't expecting to say it all. But. Well, that, look, we, we're going to roll with this for a second now, you know, because all, all of that's very important. And, and, you know, we're not not trying to overlook anybody else out there who, you know, happens not to, you know. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but, but, but this is an important portion of uh american cinema uh both television small and big screen uh you talked about hattie and you know mm -hmm. we'll say her colleagues around that time mostly had to kind of deal with the same role you were going to play the maid or this mm -hmm. or that mm -hmm. uh, any role of relative substance you were uh, you were going to have to fight incredibly hard for or you just were going to be replaced largely by a yeah. white counterpart right um pinky that's the movie I'm thinking. There, there's uh there's imitation of life and there's pinky mm. they both basically had the same premise where mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a black right. daughter right but the they're played by white women yeah. Now I bring that up because uh, Lena Horne was up for the role, I believe, in Pinky, mm -hmm. because in a black and white film, she photographs white. Wow. Yeah, you're right. But they wouldn't let her do it. 
as gorgeous as she was, as much as she could have played the part, they they just cancel white women instead. <laughs> I know that, that uh, that's this is brought to you by no guts, no glory. <laughs> Sorry to turn into to to a Debbie Downer there. I, that's, these, these, uh, well, these are I didn't make it up. These are no, I know you didn't. Goes. But these, this is observation. This is what you know. This is what we see. This is what it is. Mm. And then we just have to keep. Going through those valleys, as I'd say, I wrote a book called Get Up, and it's learning how to go through your valleys and stand on your mountain. So we have to learn. We, we got to press through, and we got to know who we are. And if I could say, which I will say, not if, I will say, in this industry with the youngins that are coming up who are very gifted and, and talented and who may be in the same position that I was in when I was growing up, and I saw all of those faces, and, and I looked at I see myself here. I can do this. And and then just don't think that you can just jump up, pop up, and I'm going to become a wonder. A one night, overnight, <laughs> you've got to go get in the grind. Um, there's a actor friend, uh, his name is Karan Joseph Riley, and he always posts his little tagline is, keep peddling. Mm. So you've got to keep peddling you have to learn your craft i know now i'm going off into my another thing not this is what you're supposed to be learn your your craft and never stop learning because what what i learned 20 years ago fast forward is different now from uh the acting back then it was acting it was this and it was that and it was the way i'm posturing myself right now but you fast forward I want you to talk, and the director and the writers and whoever else will say, just be natural. I don't need you to act. Don't act. Really? Don't act. So then, like we're talking right now, mm -hmm. and I may be, maybe we're doing a scene, but it's not an interview, but it's you and I, and you're playing the role of my son that you lied about earlier. <laughs> and I didn't lie. Okay. I stretched the truth okay. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 yes, uh, it's, the lie sounds so horrible. I know, because I don't know why I said it so hard, because my mom used to, we couldn't use that word. And then when my children were born, I would say, we don't use the word hate and lie. And so my daughter, um, I guess she figured how to say it, I strongly dislike. <laughs> so I, I yeah, it's somebody, yeah, and, and uh, hate or lie. I you created story an alternate ain't. scenario your of your character <laughs> in the, uh, right, in the right, movie. Right. <laughs> See, that sounded good. Too. I, right. I was surprised. That just surprised me. Right, right. <laughs> so so I'm sitting here. You and I are doing a scene, and I'm making, making it too big because I'm acting. So why did you do that? Why, why did you go out on the street and, and uh, jump on that guy like you did? What did he do to you? Sir, to make you, I'm talking to you, son, don't look at me like that. So the director would say to me, okay, you got the lines memorized. You're talking to your son. Mm. It's you and him. And you, you got questions for him. Bring it to you just naturally talking. The cameras are not on you. Why do you go out on the street like that? What, what caused you to just jump on that man? What did he do to you? Why? You see how I'm bringing you in. I'm mm -hmm. taking you because I'm talking. I'm not trying to because I know the camera's up. Why did you do? Bring it down. Bring it back. So that's the, the bigger part of saying that how we have to bring back. Back then, it was wonderful on camera or on stage to be dr dramatic like I am right now. And being that and shaking this wig on my head like I'm shaking it right now and doing that. Y'all know it's a wig, so I'm not doing I ain't ashamed to say, so you home looking at me saying, ooh, that's shiny. What, ooh, what kind of conditioner? That ain't her hair. It ain't. So stop your worrying. Get into what we're saying here. Get into it. So anyway, so I'm like, oh. So I even now... I've had to learn through acting classes. One of my acting coaches, Greg Allen Williams, who plays my husband in all those Christmas movies, and I've done a lot of stuff with him. And even on set, we did five, it was like a franchise, we did five Christmas movies that was almost like a series because we'd keep it going, written by a wonderful, Rhonda Baraka, who is a wonderful writer. Okay. And so 
um, we were doing a scene where we were sitting on the bed and we were dressed in our, our night clothes and I wanted to talk to him about something and I wanted to adopt because our oldest daughter had moved and got married and she was and gone to uh, Africa to, to be a missionary there with a, her husband, which was our son-in-law. And so I, there's a young girl that I, I met in a facility and I got attached to her because I was volunteering and I got attached to her and I really, in a foster care and I wanted to adopt her. And here is Greg and I and our characters. We're the seniors in the family. We're the only ones of my three sisters that are married. And so uh, he just retired. So now he wants to do some things in life. And here I come wanting to adopt a 12 year old mm. because I'm missing my daughter who has been gone. So I'm sitting there. Um, and uh, he walks in, I'm folding some clothes because our daughter had just said she wasn't going to be able to come home for Christmas because they have to work at the mission, da da da. And I'm just so upset because we had gone through a lot of trouble painting the room and getting the house together for all of them. So I'm sitting there just, and he walks in, and, you know, hey, you know, and gives his little line and he sits down. And I'm thinking, and I want to talk to him about this. Honey. I want to talk to you about something. You you know the little girl that I that I see, and I'm giving him these lines, and Greg is sitting there, and he goes to the scene, and he says, yes, in that tone. He has this baritone, big voice, but it's like, yeah. well, are you thinking what I'm thinking? His reply, I don't know what you're thinking. Well, I'm thinking da-da-da-da-da-da. And so that scene, and so they say, and cut, because you know they have to, they do several takes. Right. But while they were doing what they were doing, then he's my act acting coach, right? He says, D, pull back on it. It's me and you. We're talking in the bedroom. He said, and this scene, pretty much saying, unlike the other ones where I'm supposed to be big, I'm yelling at everybody and mm -hmm. saying, get up, get out of bed, whatever. He said, to pull it back. So when they take it, when I say take three, I think we're going to take three. Do that. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. So, okay. He walks in, honey, because he said, almost whisper. Mm. He said, honey, I want to talk to you about something. You know the girl that I see all the time at the foster care, and he, in the same tone that he had when I did all the other ones with the big voice, he said, yes. I, I want to talk to you. I think I want to adopt her, and you don't have to say anything right now, but just... And so I went through that whole scene like that. I went, <laughs> slapped at me, and he just looked at me. I told you. <laughs> I said, in my mind, I want to see why didn't one of them come? He, they don't know. They they were probably kind of happy with what you did. They were getting a couple of takes. But when you did that last one, they were like, oh, okay, that was it. That, I mean, we, you did good on that. That was it. So I said all that to say we continue to learn, hone your craft. Don't think because you, you, you got a part in and you just stumbled up on it and you're the actor that can now go and teach acting classes because you got one uh, scene in a movie and now you think you the heasy, you got it off, you <laughs> all that. And there are people that do that. That do I, that. Uh, so you got to keep learning. And then I tell people, I'm giving you nuggets now as we're getting into it. When you're looking for a, an, an actor or acting coach, get somebody that's a working actor. Greg Allen is a working actor. When I was introduced to him at uh, Actors Breakthrough, which is where his school was, he was acting then, he had other teachers, but he was still there when he wasn't on set every day. He's still drilling into you. He's in the know. So you have to, first of all, continue I have been in this industry for 40 plus years and I still will, you can get some online classes. If you cannot afford, there's something for, for you can get. You don't have to always come out of pocket for $400 for five sessions. Not that's, no, that's cheap. Uh, yeah, never mind. $400 <laughs> for one session. Well, well, you gave some good nuggets right here. I mean, you thankfully showed the difference between performance A, performance B, rather than just say it. Mm -hmm. So they can 
absorb that. I hope you're taking notes. Mm -hmm. If not, rewind that when you, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. you can get what she's saying. Conversational. It's just conversational. That's the word that I really want to just, just have. unless it causes, even if it calls for you to be yelling at somebody, it's still conversational. You don't have to make it big like you're now on stage. It's a different thing. If you're a stage <laughs> person and you're doing, then you got to be big because you got to reach the person that's sitting in the balcony if you're in that big of a room. Yes. Uh, you know, I'll I'll try to say this and and not point out any particular studios, but there were, there was a television series in this beginning phases that used a lot of stage actors, mm -hmm. and it was one of the major criticisms of that particular show. I mean, I'm pretty sure some people probably will fill in the comments underneath. Uh, it did get better as it went on for this series that did probably two shows a week and shot a whole bunch of them mm -hmm. and <laughs> and all due respect to those I, I know it took them probably a second to kind of get off of the big absolutely. broad have the pantomiming and you know absolutely you know you, as you said the camera picks up everything you don't have to to be bold and broad and right all, right you know you can you can be subtle right and you can do it to a point that you know it, if you're on this series or a movie and whatnot, people, I mean, when you do it really well, they probably have no idea who you are personally. Mm -hmm. They just think you're, mm -hmm. hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, the mom from, you know, this Christmas it's, movie. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's, it's um, yeah, you just, it's just the conversational. And even when I get um, auditions, the direction that I get uh, when my, agent sends me the audition and then they have the sheet from the casting people giving the instructions of the age of the person her background so you can kind of get in because you know of course you don't get the whole script so you've got to kind of set your character into the sheet that you've been given and and so you're looking at that and it says okay this is about a small town da 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 da, da. and so what I do when I do the auditions is that if it's a small town uh, the woman is 60 years old. She's uh, a, 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 on the edge of dementia, stuff like. So I have to look at look at all of that. So I can't come on my audition tape with my hair slinging and eyelashes on. I gotta give them what you're looking for. So I gotta pull the hair back. No makeup. I might powder a little bit, and I have to give them. A woman that is to about to be, she's losing her. You know, she's she's losing it. So, so that, that I want to ask that because you you going off into the casting process, which you know, a lot of them I've dealt with. And and the first thing I want to ask about is there are some actors out who who get really discouraged, mm -hmm. um, having gone through the casting process. I don't know. I mean, it, I know it probably may be cliche. Maybe they've heard it a thousand times. But, you know, the truth behind some of that is that you can't necessarily take that personally. It is a business that is designed to weed you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's the harsh truth of it. Mm -hmm. They are there sitting behind that table watching you fully prepared to weed you out because we got a thousand of you. Mm -hmm. So, when you as an actor go into, you know, you get your sides, you, you're told, hey, you go, you're going here. What is the, I mean, you gave some of your, your mindset right there is that you get into full-on character. Now, I guess as a teaching moment, are you walking in as this character from the moment you hit that door? Or mm -hmm. is this just something like, okay, I'll get it when I step through or mm -hmm. I'll wait for the instruction? What? What process works for you? Well, when we were doing it, uh, where we would have the casting, the casting director and producer, and maybe whoever else they'd have in the room, I'll mm -hmm. put it in the room. Now, since the pandemic, Not everything so has been taped, mm -hmm. and we're uploading it to, you know, if you need to get actors access, because. You can also on Actors Access and 1-800-CASTING. I'm giving you some information where there are certain sites where if you don't have an agent, 
they do a it's like a casting call, but they put it all there, and they'll give you the category, the role, and and it'll even have the city for audition, and then you follow the instructions there. So as far as now auditions, like one I have to do actually when I get home, I just reminded myself, you I'll get from my agent. You've been requested for, and they put the role, they put this, they put that, and then I have to go to Actors Access, and I can see who's casting it, who the production, t- who what when it's due. Mm-hmm. So the one that I have, which I always get mine in early, is not due until uh, um, what's next week, May the where the are we in May? May? We are yeah. in the first week of May, so May fourth, whatever Wednesday is, that's when it's due, and so. I can, it's best if you are off book, if you, and if you don't know what that means, that means that you memorize your lines and you have someone that's auditioning, like, like on the other side of the camera, like I'm looking at you, you, our audience now, but when I do my audition, my son usually reads for me, so I have to look off camera. I'm just giving you a little tip so you'll know about you don't look at the camera when you're told to upload your audition Mm -hmm. unless you are auditioning for a reporter or something and the reporter is then they might give you that yeah that makes sense yeah so then you can give them that so take uh, these notes (laughs) (laughs) so this is d etta west reporting from uh wade works wibc and da 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 and so i'm looking here and in today we have da 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 and so that's there but if my son who is standing on this side he has what i've copied off the sides, which may be one scene, you know, they don't give you the whole, if, even if you have more scenes. And he's on the side, and he's reading, and we he hits the my phone, our phone, that people are doing their auditions on their phone. You do it this way. Mm. Don't do auditions Yes, please, this way. please. Uh, I'm not an actor, nor do I play one on TV. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that is a pet peeve of mine as a production guy. Don't shoot like that. Correct. This way, <laughs> fill the screen. Right. Exactly. Uh, anyway, that yes. continue. <laughs> and so the 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 light ring that you should we should all have if you're doing your auditions from home a lot now. I think the casting <laughs> directors have gotten they like this now mm-hmm. because they sometimes they don't want to be sitting in a room <laughs> <laughs> waiting on you to. <laughs> and then they come in. So in answer to that, I get into character long before it's not like just handing your sides when you show up at the audition uh in most cases you'll get it ahead of time and then it's your choice if you want to uh get have it memorized or if you're going to do cold sometimes the casting directors will they don't need you to do it to have it memorized but if you cold read and you have to get your sides your script your scene when you walk into the room you better read it over enough times before you walk in that you can give them, you can look off from just, you're not just reading. Oh, hello, how are you, so-and-so? You can look, you know what's coming. Hello, so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. How are you today? While the other person, which would be the casting director on the other side, mm-hmm. reading with you, you, oh, I'm doing great. How are you doing? You can take a glance back there. I'm doing fine. So you're still memorizing, but you're just having to memorize a line yeah. by line. Mm. But you're very fortunate when you get, most of us, get your sides at least a couple of days before you have to either show up in person, which I haven't been had a show up in person. Even when I got a call back, it wasn't in person. They Zoomed me in. Huh. So the call back, and for those of you who don't know, the call back is... You did really good. They like like uh, the green boy here said um, <laughs> you did real good because they didn't want to. They didn't have to eliminate you. We're trying to see how many they can eliminate. It's like oh, what, what's her what's her name? Dieta. Okay, yeah. Let me put a call back on Star for her. And so then what happens is your agent reaches back and they set up a time for your call back. And during the pandemic, what they do is they zoom you in. So you have the, the casting director and maybe one of the exec producers on the project. And they're on, their, on the screen, you're on your screen, and they're reading. And you just go through that, that same thing and you give it to them, you know. And most cases... 
for me, most of them, if I get a call back, I, I book it. Mm-hmm. And when you get a call back, even if you don't book it, you're just excited that you got noticed to that extent, you know. Yeah. That, so for that. That passed the first round. Right. So, but for now with the taping, which is, I love it because you can take 5, 10, 15, 20 times and if you mess up all that and they're only going to get your good one because they don't know you've messed up like when you walk into the room. So, so that's the perk. That's being the Being able perk. to do it at home and on your own time with your own camera. And, right, right. But, you know, now, nah, but you've done it the other way around. I, I have to ask because I know some people get it every once in a while. And it throws some actors off. How important is it to have when you get that side, when you walk in the door, that person that's sitting across the table who's probably sat there and read that a mm-hmm. hundred times mm-hmm. and they're as dry as, you know, the Sahara. Right. How, how bad is that for you? Does, does it throw you off or have you managed to get through it? They're like, okay, I'm going to read with you. Mm-hmm. You know, it comes no, off at that, but <laughs> it, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's okay because... They don't want a reader. They they specifically say get tell the person to have low tones. They're reading off. They when they like I had to tell my son when he first and my husband when they first started doing this for me mm-hmm. when I was doing it from home, I'd say my son would be and my husband even more so, but my son would be. Oh, hello, Mrs. Green. D- loud all up in the. And so, I'm like, you not auditioning. <laughs> my my son and he thought i was saying it because i was hating on him uh, at first in the very beginning but he, he, he didn't he quite said, get it i said son you are really you're doing a good job because he, he's a great reader mm-hmm. and he, over time he's done it for me so much he's really but the focal point i said to be... but they they really don't want you to overshadow the person that's auditioning and he said oh okay i got it i said so you can just do it and i'm talking to him like in just a tone like like this because if you're talking loud like that it distracts it distracts them and i said but you're really doing a good job and then he clowned me the other day and i said wow you really nailed that one that was like he said yeah i just had this imagination that they're gonna say who is that reading we come well we met one of, i said uh-huh i figured that's what you're doing you know Right. Sounds, uh, <laughs> right, right. incredible can we get that young man in? <laughs> right right so anyway so um for that in most cases when i'm doing it live mm-hmm. um you still get your sides at least a day they don't give you as much time like i have for this one i have to do when i get home and it's not due till wednesday mm. they do suggest especially this particular casting director don't don't wait till the day of or the night he's watching he said i'm watching them all the time so as soon as i get yours if i get yours the same day you were told to do the audition i could very well look at it then and make my notes then so it gets them on top of stuff faster. Mm-hmm. Do not wait. And they clearly say, do not wait until the last minute. So if it's one that you get and you got to go in the next day, then you try to memorize. I've always basically memorized those, even though they say you can read it. And you go in and you don't expect the casting director to give you the business, meaning pump you up make yeah. you respond I'm just going <laughs> to give you some energy so you can bounce right I'm just reading I'll give you a little bit because there are a couple of casting directors that will give me a little bit mm. and that's okay I don't I don't care but because so, they you don't just, go in expecting that I don't I just go in with my mindset on who this person is that I'm portraying and I'm going in and I'm giving it no matter if it's a high energy scene and the reader is not high energy, that's your business. I'm going to give it the business because I know there's exclamation points and directives in there of what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm gasping for air before I say this or I'm screaming out the door, get back in. And I'm not, I'm going to give all of that. I'm, I'm leaving it all, as they say, on the stage. You know, uh, these are points I think that uh, they need to take because you, you I find this fascinating, really. Uh, audition bullet points, we'll, we'll call that. So, I mean, hopefully you'll be able to uh, find this segment in there, but I'm going to do a quick recap because I think this is great stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so virtually speaking, we're going we're gonna to say uh, make sure that you're in a well-lit room. Mm-hmm. 
quiet so that you are picked up. Mm -hmm. Best scenario, have a reader mm -hmm. off camera, but not overpowering so mm -hmm. that they become distracted. Mm -hmm. They need to have a reader, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, you want to make sure that you do not procrastinate. Right. Don't want to don't want to send that the the last minute, right? Um, what else? Uh, what other points do do we make here? Uh, if you're going in, it is not their job to give you high energy. It is your job to present. Right? They're not actors. They're not on being auditioned. I mean, well, yeah, exactly. They're going to read the lines, their lines, so you can feed them back what they're looking for, the casting direct producers, casting directors. Another thing, have a well-lit room. You can have your ring light. Make sure you have a plain background, no, lot, no flowers and no bookcases mm -hmm. and po poetry, uh, not poetry, uh, art work. On, they want a blank wall behind mm -hmm. you. And usually they're asking, and they'll give you these instructions. They usually want you from the chest, I'd say right from under my bosom, up and make sure you don't chop your your head off so this is what you how you're framing framing yourself in an audition well, it's not like a lot this. of head room either yeah i'm trying to see what yeah the head don't cut your head head off and right here because what they want is to see you your face don't do it far back they want it they want you there and they want to make sure that whatever mic you have, be it the mic from your phone, that it's picking up your voice. And also, even though you might be doing it, a lot of times, no props unless they get, tell you. They'll let you know. Like if you're doing a scene where you're talking on the phone, mm -hmm. which I had one, and I actually had my cell phone, you know, and used it. And they, cause, because they said, if you want to, while you're doing this scene, have a, a prop, your prop, you can do that. But then there are other times when they say, no props, just do the audition. Meaning, if you're supposed to be drinking or toasting someone mm. in your scene, which I had one the other week that I did where I'm supposed to toast them. Mm -hmm. They just want you to pantomime it. Yeah, you can pantomime it, or, which I did. I just kind of took my hand and cheers or whatever to you. That's what I said, cheers, mm. cheers. Uh, they don't want you, if you're supposed to be a police officer, don't go out and get a police officer's uniform for this audition. Just do your, do your best. Now, the one that I'm, that's coming up that I'm doing tonight, I'm, uh, I think, a fortune teller or something. And, so, and she's got her head wrapped. Mm. And so I'm just going to, all I'm going to do so they can get the look is I have some of these turbans that when I have bad hair days or I don't want to wear a wig or I don't want to pull out my uh, my afro I just want to give a look put my turban on I got some big gold earrings on and I thought about it because they always want a full body shot they will always want the audition that's one file the next one will be your um, slate they'll want you to say in a lot of cases your name your height and the role that you're playing and so that, again, will be on another file. Uh, that will be your slate file. You're here, Dieta West, 5-6, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, local hire. Now, these are the things that they tell you to put on your slate. They'll tell you what to put on the slate. And then some will ask that you just take the camera and pan it. Pan it. Once, once you've done your slate and mm -hmm. it's here, then they want you to take the camera down, back up, out. It's only maybe five seconds because if you're doing it right, you just Dieta West five six Atlanta Georgia Georgia, and then my son will just Atlanta Georgia boom boom out, and then that's the other the other files mm -hmm. the other files. So when you send in your audition, you're sending in the first tape, the first file is you doing the audition, and at the end of that, it's what they call uh, the slate mm -hmm. because they'll have you do that when you're in person too when you do your audition then uh, the casting director who is usually doing the camera, not only as, unless he has an assistant, will say, okay, slate, slate your name, and they'll tell you, like, right there, slate your name, your height, your agent, and uh, the role. You better have a good memory because see, they, they, they'll judge you on that. I just told you four <laughs> things to say. <laughs> you couldn't well, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> well, again, it's a business of weeding you out. 
Mm-hmm. You do something, I'm sure in their mind they consider very minute. Right. The right. Cassandra, that, that, that's all the reason I need not to call you back. You couldn't even read this email. Get out. You couldn't read it. You couldn't even read the email. It said no costumes. And here you rolling up in here in this. We just wanted the audition. <laughs> and the only thing that what where I will adjust, and they they that's good, where I will adjust if they say, because I get called in or cast for now 50 between 50 and 70 Mm -hmm. so if you're saying in the description 50 year old black woman da 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 da, then i'm gonna make it look 50 i'm gonna do something like this and some makeup and dress dress a certain way Mm -hmm. you know if you say 70 year old those are the only kind of things that i will do to adjust to the to the age age thing you know or to what i'm doing that day like not day on that audition if i'm um on the street fussing at uh, the boys for doing something and i'm a 70 year old woman i'm going to have on something that is going to give that that kind of flavor and while i'm doing the audition because they usually want you to hit from here I'm bringing my hands up so you can see my hands on the hips and I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you that, get off these streets, pull your pants up and I'm going to give them, give them the voice. Mm. And then I'm giving them the, when they're asking for sophisticated, she comes from wealth. I did a dynasty uh, audition, didn't get the role, but it's okay. But I gave them dynasty. Ah, right. popped my face. Ah, put the pearls on. I did, I, I have another wig. It's nice to women, and you know this, to have several wigs so you can change up, you can look different, you can wear your own hair if you don't, you know, just come. Anyway, so I had a kind of a bigger wig, and so I gave them, I gave them Dynasty. You came in ready. And I came in because I can give you my comfortable talk, like, we're going to be doing what? I can give you that Mm. dialect. Yeah. But some of them tell you in auditions, no southern dialect they put that in there so they not gonna say don't talk black Um, (laughs) but but this is what so i'm i know if i'm doing dynasty and i'm a wealthy woman i'm going to speak like this charles why did you why did you even say that i'm not gonna say why you say that why you go there you know (laughs) nondescript accent right from anywhere usa right Right. So, so all of that being, those are things like everything that you said, add in the slate, because some people may, after this, wonder what a slate is if you see it anywhere in life. Don't go into an audition if you're going in in person or you're doing a callback where you see actually the casting director live on a Zoom and the... Don't don't try to be chumming up to them. Don't be... Ch- What's up? Hi. Um, uh, d- just... They will speak to you, you speak back. They want to ask you a question about how's your day, you tell them your day. My day, make it short. My day is great. You don't have to tell them you had a lousy day. They're not really therapists. They're not really, they're just making, trying to make you relax. A little they're small trying, talk. Trying to make you relax. You mean I can't walk in there and be like, oh, man, oh, I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Whew, can I sit down for a second? Uh, just my, they messed up my coffee. My car needs brakes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I can't just go down the line. Of no, and you can't do like some of these little, some, not all of them. I always, that's why I say some. Some of these little young bucks will walk in and they're trying to be cool and all cute and everything. They're not, they don't want, they're not interested in you walking in and you want to already get, hey, what's up? Mwah, yeah, we're going to do this. Hey, we going to do this. And they're like, who yeah. are you? Just- <laughs> I think they, they missed the, uh, the point of, I understand that they're probably trying to be unique and stand out. and stand out, but unfortunately, in the process of stand out, there's, like I said earlier, there's a, there's a thousand of you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, right. it's an unfortunate thing, but they do have, at, especially at that stage, they got their pick of the litter. Right. You oh, know? yeah, nowadays, it's like, like you know, yeah. Atlanta is busting. Oh, we got so much going on here. Yeah, and if, if you don't do it, I'll find another one look just like you. Just like you. 
And if you cut up and don't, if you do get booked in something and you got to go in, I know certain ones are young and you still need some more seasoning, a little more paprika, a little more garlic powder. You, the, the seasoning is not all the way there. But if I can advise you, just focus and study whoever your character is when you book that. Keep your stay in character, like you said. Keep it, stay in character. Don't go in there trying to get into what they call the village, the room where the directors and the producers are all watching on monitors. That's what they call the village. When you go on set, they see every move you're making. They see everything that you're doing, and that's how they know to come out. Like with me, if if a strand is out of place or something, they have hair and makeup. It's called the village. That's another bullet point. So you know when you're on set, and then they'll say to the makeup person or the hair person. That something is sticking out over there, going there, and then you'll you'll be sitting there not knowing why the makeup, why the hair person is coming up on you, in the middle of stuff brushing on you. They, so they said something. I'm trying to get this, and then and then let me go back and let me see if that's right, because they'll have to tell her that, or or him that that's right. Same with with makeup, you know, you know. So what's that going on with her her right under her right eye? I think she maybe was tearing so you all need to fix because when they're doing the close-up on you they can see the makeup running or so mm -hmm. all of that happens in the village where they have d their director's chairs or whatever and couches and everybody is sitting and all eyes are on you and that scene that's taking place when you go on set stop trying to run around and to get into the faces uh, you going to pick out those that you know you want to hook up with. Let them want to hook up with you. That's just what I say. Let, let like, f f for me, I'm, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but for me, the one of the movies that I did, I was like, because one of the, the network had recommended that they audition me, so it wasn't like they just found me. They did, and I happened to do a good audition, and I... I happened to get the role, so they weren't going to hire me just because the network said, we want you to look at her, because they, they need somebody that's going to do the role and look good in the role. So, f praise God, I got the role, and it was a, a great role. That's the Kirk Franklin uh, movie that came out in December. And so I wasn't trying to go on the set because I knew people from the network had recommended. I wasn't going to say... Uh, you know, the network. Right? I don't want you to kiss my kiss my. You know, I'm not. That's not me. I'm not dropping names. I'm coming here to do a job. This is about me doing a good job, mm -hmm. so that I can continue working and get called back for something else. This is me doing a good job because that network did recommend that you come after me. But the great thing about it all is because I wasn't getting in anybody's face. You know, trying to be all that is to have one of the directors. And I'm just gonna give names because I probably shouldn't be saying all this. But one of the directors to, to uh, in between the scene, I was standing waiting for the next take, and she's walking past and towards the back of the of the church, and she yells my name out, my character. She yells my name out, and I'm like, I froze when she wrote, I told her this after I rapped because we talked. I froze because she didn't call my name. What did I do? And she's yelling it like this, putting me on blast. She said my name, and I said, yes, ma'am, and she said, you are killing the game. <laughs> I had to brace myself. This is executive producer. She just said, I am killing the game. I, I was ready. I went in even further in than I would, thought I was going in for this movie, mm -hmm. and so I didn't have to chase after them to be seen, I had to, in case in your mind you were thinking like, okay, well, we did hire her. We hope she's going to bring it, even though she was recommended by the network. I had to show you that I'm here to, to play, here to work it, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to make God proud, number one, mm -hmm. me proud, number two, and all the rest of you, oh, and the network that recommended me, mm -hmm. and all the rest of you proud, because this is y'all's movie, the writer there, the, the, the directors there, all of them. And when she told me at the end when I wrapped, it was we were on set for two weeks. And I, I don't know, she probably wouldn't care that I'd mention her name, but I 
probably shouldn't. And she said, she came up to me and she was so, she said, I need to tell you something. She said, and she was very honest with me. Mm-hmm. When we were asked to audition you, and she said, these are all the things that went, because she also kind of was ahead over the casting part as well, not only an executive producer, but casting. And well, I would, she said, i be honest with you. I was like, oh. I started showing favoritism. Right. We got to hire somebody because the, the big net, network. Mm. She said, but I didn't say anything. She said, I, we auditioned you for two roles, and you, you brought it then. I said, they were happy because they were able to. She said, but I have to tell you, she said, you, and she went on to say, I'm not going to say all the other words, but to stand there and her looking at me and dead, and now we're, we're buddies now, mm-hmm. you know, but to look, look in my eyes and say, I cannot tell you how you brought this character. I knew you'd do it. I knew once we picked it was the two that we were looking at, but... I, you were for this one, and I thank God that you, God used her because it was the role that had more than two or three scenes. There were two I auditioned for, but the one that she gave me was the one that literally was throughout the whole movie. I had about seven, eight scenes, you know, significant yeah. roles in there. And I'm like, wow, God, thank you. And again, doing this, God, me, the network, and everybody. I'm proving something to God, myself, you open this door. And I'm getting ready to do another movie on the same network. They came back. That's great. Did I audition for it? No. They offered it. They went to my agent. Based on the strength of your work. And, and knowing me and mm-hmm. some of the people that know the, the network. Professionalism. I don't give nobody no problems. You know, you ask me if I want breakfast when the PAs come up to the trailer I'm gonna say do you want breakfast maybe I can get because I know you're running all day long you know and so I respect not just the people that are in the village mm. not just the people that are catering uh, meaning catering that are doing right. my hair and makeup I love uh, it, all of them are somebody because it takes the whole village to make these movies work, be it an independent movie, a short movie, and I do all of that stuff. Mm. That's another thing. Don't get too high and lifted up and think that you are worthy to be praised. That there are times, don't forget your humble beginnings. And I even now, I, have, I've, I'm, I haven't arrived. Mm. I am not uh, named... Well, she's directing. I'm not the Kerry Washingtons or the uh, Cicely Tyson. I'm not. I'm, I don't have a big a big name, but I've done enough where I'm comfortable, and I'm still go, trying to go at it until the Lord calls me home. But I respect everybody that's on that set. I mean, you got a, a vast array of movies underneath you. Now, one of the things I was going to ask because of that is because you, there's a, a particular genre of work. That you, that you have now is that on purpose or is it just kind of you just kind of steered in that direction? Have you gotten a script like, eh, no, I don't want to do that. That's you know, it's not family friendly or what have you. I mean, I use the term family friendly, mm-hmm. um, but that yeah, that, I mean that's that's a large portion of the genre that seems to be under your name. Was that with intent or just? Happy circumstance. I think it was, uh, I have turned down some auditions, not even turned down a role, just when I get the audition, I'm like, I, I already see where this is going. <laughs> and one of them I did several years ago, mm. um, and I won't even name the, sh- the show, it was a series. Um, I'll try to word it. Well, anyway, in the scene, um, the, the main character of the series was trying to, check me out Mm -hmm. you know and so we met in a hotel Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not giving you the whole how at all but we met in a hotel and um, I walked in to the room and I had on maybe like a robe something like this now it didn't it wasn't gonna be me doing what I'm telling you because they would I would have said okay I'm good for everything else but Y'all got to stand in or somebody look alike for me that's going to walk in with her robe open mm-hmm. and her uh, JJ 
I don't know. Is this a, are we family you, friendly here? You can say what you want. <laughs> you said all he, the above. Okay, so yeah, I can do okay. You can go ahead and say it. So because you can yeah, you can cut out whatever you want. That's but, right. They can always believe it. Right. So I'm to walk into the room where he is and it's gonna be showing that mm. with a V carved out of the the hairs. I just right. don't know how to say it. I'm trying to well, find that, the that, words. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> a little female scaping. Yep. For the yeah, for the, a little I mean, trim up, a little, yeah, a little, little trim, up. trim up. Okay. And I'm like, this was in the description mm. of the audition, so I didn't have the whole script, but it gave enough with what but, he was going to see. Just walking into. And and I'm like, and I said, I'm not. I can't even do this audition because if, first of all, I'm not going to shave it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry to make you gentlemen. Uh, well, I mean, I can't. Uh, <laughs> look at me in the eye. You've been looking at me in the I, eye the I, whole time. Now you done switched to looking back down. I, yeah, I have to look at my notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I've been, I've been here. I'm right, with right. You. <laughs> okay. But you know, I mean, look, we we, we veered off into a whole different I mean, topic. We here. sure did. But, but in, in answer, let me let me roll back. I believe that most of the all of the roles pretty much that I've been cast into um, took off because of the ones that I had been cast in. So if it's, I always seem to get auditions now for mother, mm -hmm. grandmother, uh, what should I say, the, the, the one who is the um, one who is the voice, the, the, the sounding, the solid person in the, all of that, okay. the reason, the one who brings the, all of that stuff. I, I can't even think of all the, the, the words. The matriarch. The matriarch, yeah, that's one. And so most of those that you see mm. are, are like that, like uh, Preacher's Kid with Greg Allen who played the pastor and Latoya Luckett played... Uh, the role of the preacher's kid who went off and uh, wanted to be in the, in the, it's the prodigal son, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. prodigal son. And so I was uh, Greg's assistant, his secretary. He's the bishop of a big church. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was, she was older. So they actually, the age that they were looking for, I was that age, but the writer of it, who I knew out of LA, hadn't seen me in a while, but he basically knew my age. But when he came, went, once they booked me and they, he came for the table read and he kind of looked and he said, you don't know. wait, no, I take that back for the audition, which was live when I came, he came from LA to Atlanta. This is where it was filmed. So he wanted to, and when he saw me for the first time in person yeah. and he said, come here. Everybody's sitting out in there waiting for their time to audition, but he was walking through. He was a writer, creator, and executive producer, and he was also a part of the casting. Walked through there, and I see him, and I waved, and he kind of looked like he didn't recognize, and then he went, he, he looked back like this, and he went. So and I think everybody in the room, you know, here I am, I'm about, how, who's calling her back? I was here before her, so I could see <laughs> I was so uncomfortable. So I walked back there and he how said. How many people I stepped on just right, in this moment? <laughs> right. <laughs> I know like yes, right. And you could, hey. Yes, right. I mean, here's a 4 a.m. Yeah, right, right. And then she just walked in like 20 minutes ago and you call her. So he hugged me, he said, hey, girl. He said, wow, you, he said, you don't look old enough for this role. It was almost like him saying, I, don't, I mean, we'll go ahead and audition you, but I really did not picture you. Because I was just, been, I had my little jeans on and my little, I was looking, I know, I look, I, I can make myself look fly. I wasn't trying to look young. I just said, what would I do? Mm. And I said, all right, well, I'll do the audition. So I did the audition. And he was like, and, and so he came back out and the assistant person was there. He said, man, she don't look old enough for this role. But she brought it. We just have to figure this out. And so God figured it out because he fought because he wanted to put me in his movie. Mm. He fought them at the 
uh, studio. They were like, well, what do you, she, I, we got this. Because I said, Stan, that was his first name. I said, Stan, what is makeup and hair for? I mean, if I'm bringing you everything, what did you want? Do you want somebody fatter or somebody with more wrinkles? Because I've been in auditions where that's what they, well, you, you did great, hair. but then they decided along the way before they cast it, I think we need to get somebody that's a little heavier, a little fatter. Mm. And, oh, trust me, that happens. Wow, we didn't know that she was quite that thin. I ain't thin. You just won't, I'm not going to call any names, but you just won't. You want, you want it uh, on the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. A little, a little further down. Uh, yep. on the so, table read. See, I can that, say it nice. Yeah. You can say it nice. <laughs> I can too, but I don't I want, I'm, I I want to be that. thinking about all that. But, um, so he walks into the table read all the cast so all the cast from preacher's kid are are in the room for the table read and i came looking the part that i knew i, I had put uh baby powder in my hair to gray it up mm-hmm. i did my hair up into like a mahalia jackson oh. do i did that i had some glasses wire rim that were really my brothers, after my brother passed, there were things that I didn't care about all the big stuff he left. Mm. I liked one of little things, and he used to wear uh, wire, these wire rim glasses, which I hated, but I, I, because I like my big, you know, we like our glasses, you know, if you're going to wear them. So I had those on, and um, I was dressed, the whole, the whole thing, just... So he's walking around the room and introducing, he said, okay, you know, everybody introduce yourself. And he's walking around the room and he gets to me and he looks. Who are you? He didn't recognize me. I said, I told you. He said, oh my God. And everybody's looking at what what is wrong with him? He said, y'all don't even know. She don't, she, and this is what he said. She fine, she fine. I ain't fine now. He said, no, but what I'm saying, you guys, is you wait to, if when you see her without what she has done to her whole, this is, he said, oh, my God, you brought it. You brought it. I said, told you. And I, I did this. Mm-hmm. Your makeup people could do. And they sort of took to that, what I did and had my hair, so, if you remember. So they basically followed the template that you created that, for a character that they had, but. You exactly. defined who that character was. Right, exactly, exactly. So that's, I know, that. so all of those on IBM, I, IMDB, all of that that you see just happen to kind of go that way and because of some of the ones that I turned down because if I had a book, to, I don't, it wasn't going to serve me, right? Well, what's a role that you would like to play? That you, if you haven't had the opportunity to get there yet, but, you know, you said you've been to Matriarch Mom and this, that. What's a role that, you know, if, if it were to materialize, like, you know, I'd really like to do that? Well, I'm glad you asked that because the role that is coming up in this next movie, uh, there's two of them, actually. I wanted to play a pastor, which is still what I am. Mm-hmm. I'm not a pastor, but a minister. Yeah. And that, that cropped up for me, which will air on BET Plus May... 19th. It's called Kingdom Business. It's a series. Uh, it stars Yolanda Adams. She has the lead role in nice. Michael Beach. Is this breaking news? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well it, it's out there now. I couldn't talk about it or post pictures or do anything. But now you can. Now I can. So it's called Kingdom Business. Uh, Michael Jai White. Uh, these are your leads. Um, Michael Beach. Uh, Kirk is in it because Kirk Franklin is also one of the executive producers. So he has, a, 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 I think, a couple That's of scenes. That's right, because when I front the money, I can show up anytime <laughs> I want. <laughs> I'll be taking that role. <laughs> but he actually didn't, from my understanding, he didn't really want to be in it. He just wanted to do the exact. He didn't, but they asked him. Mm-hmm. You know, they wanted him to be in it. So I can, in his defense, he wasn't trying. He don't have to do all that. He said, I just give me. What? Y'all want me to be in this movie? Man, look, no, I'm not going. All right. <laughs> he said, you know. So, and um, a young lady, I think her name is Saraya. You may, S-E-R-A-Y-A-H. And she's a, a secular artist. Mm. 
but I think she may, I don't know, I don't think she's up and coming, because if you look her up, if you look on IMDb, she has done some stuff that's familiar. She's a young woman. She's about, in, she looked like her 20s, late 20s. But I play uh, a pastor and kind of sort of would be a nemesis with, with uh, Yolanda, who is the pastor of a big mega church, and she's the king pin. It's almost like empire on Christendom. So there's a lot of music. Mm-hmm. And so you got empire, you got uh, kingdom business. Uh, okay. So it's almost uh, that kind of so Are that. Are you the antagonist here? Um, you said the rival with with her character. So. I don't have a scene with her, mm-hmm. but. The people that are in the scene with me are people that are supposed to be kind of supportive of her. One, Michael Jai White is like a, a record producer, and he's also a member, uh, like over the music ministry in my in the church that I and I even baptize. I get a chance to like do a little preaching up there, and I do uh, baptizing. But I can't tell you no more. That's all I'm gonna tell you about that one. And so that's that. I would want I wanted to do that. And then the second one. Um, I'm doing on uh, June 18th will be on Lifetime Mm -hmm. and it's uh, called Suitcase Killer. Suitcase Killer. Based on a true story and um, I can talk about that too. It's a true story because it's already out. I think the press release went out. Um, It's a true story based upon a woman who pretty much killed her, murdered her husband chopped him up put him in the suitcases yeah how did i know it was going that way yeah threw it in the chesapeake bay <laughs> chopped him up put him. And, ah. and they later in at constant investigating mm. investigation they finally um find these suitcases don't ask me how but i tell you folk you, you good you're gonna find something that's gonna if you especially if you are on it like that and it's something you care about and but this is taken from a true story and so my scene i play a judge uh, okay yeah so i that and i so i want i've always wanted to play you know like that kind of the judge because that's kind of you know i like that little posture you know and the preacher mm. I've done that. I'd like to play if it was a movie, an ongoing series where I was a reoccurring series where I'm a therapist, you know. Um, and I might, like uh, um, several movies I've seen, I said, oh, I would have loved to have played that role where I'm a therapist to a guy who's a manipulator and a killer. And I can't remember the name of the movie, but he keeps well, coming see, to me. I was me. just about to ask. I was like, oh, what's this movie that you, the role, the, the, yeah. the one that got away? Yeah, I didn't audition for that. Oh, you just, yeah, you just I'm just would have saying I've it. seen it. That mm-hmm. what I've said. That's what I love to do. And and I I'd like to play um a, a gang when I say gangster. Uh oh. I'd like to be the, the queen pin, not the king pin. I'd mm-hmm. like to be the one running it. Yeah. I'm like I'm the matriarch, all right. And all y'all I'm packing. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, Y'all fall in line. Fall in line. Yeah, that's the one nah. I'd love to nah, do. Nah. Are we rolling? We've got to be comfortable when we give those bullet points and all that I could tell you about the process, but you have to know this is what you want to do. You have to know that in the midst of it all that uh, you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength and you cannot be moved by what you see or by what you feel because you're going to see a whole lot and you're going to feel a whole lot, but you can't allow that to to put you back into a place of, of a shell or depression or to feel that you this is not your calling and to question yourself. Be comfortable in your own skin. I am so comfortable in my own skin. I trust God and even more, not more importantly, I tr- but uh, along with that, I trust myself. So I have to, I, I surround myself with people. I have a great family. Some people aren't that fortunate to have a supportive spouse and children, young grown folk in my house, they steal my children to support and to push you on. But surround yourself with people who will be positive and will, even in your down moments, they're going to still be hanging with you and there, and you do the same. So uh, uh, friendliness begats friendliness. 
for real, if you genuinely. So for me, it's just like being comfortable in your own skin, loving up on yourself, trusting who you are, knowing who you are, and re- and just remember that you ha- are fearfully and wonderfully made, no matter what state of mind you might be in right now. Go back and grab the dreams and your visions off of the shelf. Surround yourself with artwork that really tells you that you, no guts, no glory. You got to put the work in and then you'll become the king and the queen that you are ordained to be. You will be the lion and the tigress that God ordained you to be. Know that you have to just be still and know that you are God. I'm looking at my surroundings right now, which is encouraging me. There are three things you got to remember. You have to have faith. You have to have hope. And you have to love. Don't matter if they're loving you back. You can love and they don't even know that. You just know that uh, the Lord is preparing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So you need to know, just keep peddling, keep moving, keep knowing, like I said, you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. And we can give you some tales from the crip. I can give you some tales that my brother who is, well, he's gone home to be with the Lord. He's not positioned in a crypt, per se. He, <laughs> his ashes are in the Hudson Bay in New York. Yeah, but, you know, tell some the urn doesn't sound, doesn't have the same kind of ring to it. Right. You know, it just doesn't roll off the tongue. Right. Yeah. We, but, but, you know, one of, you said your brother, and we haven't addressed that yet. Would you like to tell the people who your brother is? We, we haven't officially addressed that on camera, at least not in this podcast. Um, oh, okay. We've done it a couple of times. <laughs> um, we have not. My brother is uh, Cleavon Little, and it's C-L-E-A, V is in victory, O-N. And a lot of them say Cleveland, like in Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. But it's Cleavon Little. He was the main, he was a star of uh, Blazing Saddles, which yes. is yeah, known to many. It he, is the movie, it is the one that he's mostly remembered for, Blazing Saddles. It, it, is, it is an exactly. iconic film. It is never going anywhere. Probably could never be produced again. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but but his his slot in Hollywood's history is, is cemented. Right, exactly, exactly. The, the yeah. fact that that movie has gone on generationally at this at this stage I mean, every year somebody is hitting me up saying, and it, they're still airing it. Oh, I just saw Blazing Saddles. I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, that was done in the, was it the 70s? It had to have been in the mid-70s. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, and and they celebrate the anniversary of Blazing Saddles. Yes. And then they have all this stuff running on TV, and people will constantly keep me posted up where they'll have pictures of, of him, some behind-the-scenes stuff. So it was one of the So Blazing Saddles, he won a Tony for Pearly, which was a Broadway uh, stage play in New York, and uh, he was amazing in that. That was when I think I got on the plane for the first time in my life, not for the Tonys, but to go back and see the play uh, on Broadway, which was a wonderful experience for me. Mm-hmm. It was like major, major with Melba Moore, who's a major, and George uh, Sanford. St- I mean, Sherman Hemsley. Sherman Hemsley, yeah. It still. is how he got discovered. Yeah. So that, a that bit of TV trivia there, right? A lot of people don't know that. No, they don't. And, and he was considered so good. See, I, it's like all of those guys kind of ran in the same circle, but he was considered so good within that mm-hmm. that uh, the guy that produced all of them that held the role of George Jefferson, despite the fact that he had to wait for Sherman to complete his run. Right. So they inserted a substitute George mm-hmm. who they just unveiled later to be oh I was, I was uh, Louise's brother George didn't want to meet y'all because he don't like white people oh, oh that, wow you got that, that, that huh yeah because they, they had somebody else come on to the show and interact with Archie as George but then you know I think and when that when they finished him up mm-hmm. as he was Louise they was like no he, he just came because Louise wanted George to go mm-hmm. George was introduced as a character Mm-hmm. But he never showed up because, again, as we said off camera, George mm-hmm. is the polar opposite of Archie. He mm-hmm. wanted nothing to do with him. Right. So right. they just let his, her brother go in, and then that's 
where that, right. that wow. So wow. yeah, that was, a, that was <laughs> and wow. it all comes back to all in the family. Cleveland yeah. appears on there that. with. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, sir, I'm not sure. Yes, but yeah, yeah. The, yeah. And, and there you got Lamont yeah. from that. So that's crazy. But yeah, so all the, intertwined. That's who he is. So you can look him up. You can still see him on I see not him, but on IMDb and. Um, he did, uh, what else did he do? Uh, he love at did, First Bite. Yeah, Love at First Bite. That was where he played the the vampire. and With a very young Jim Carrey. I know, right. First he big like role, a, I think, of his. Yeah, yeah. He was like, he looked like he was just fresh out of high school. He might have been. Because he really <laughs> he looked was, very. He was very, very young. I can't remember. And the, uh, his co-star Clinton, that he was working for in the movie escapes me right now. It'll probably come to me later, but mm-hmm. I, I know that was the whole premise of the movie. He was the servant to the vampire queen, and mm-hmm. right? Needed a virgin, so yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, there was a series that was on that Cleveland was in uh, called I think it was either Five Up, Two Down, or or Three Up, One Down, something like that. But anyway, it wasn't on for like I think it only did one season maybe and it starred Whoopi Goldberg I never really? forget that mm-hmm. oh, that was doing for me and I think it's one up five up three down something like that but that one that one didn't go all the way um, temperatures rising mm. he played a doctor an intern that was a series that was on with Edward Asner Ed Asner uh, Ed Asner yeah, yeah played yeah. the main doctor um, wow, he did some stuff. He did I'm Not Rapid, Rappaport, which was a stage play with um, Judd Hirsch. Oh, uh, from Taxi. Taxi, yeah. And then Cleveland got an Emmy from Dear John, I think that's what it was, and Judd Hirsch. The I series think, Dear John? Series, oh, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was not a Hirsch series. Yeah, and he got an Emmy from that, and I was... Actually, there he didn't know he was going to win. He was doing a play, and the Emmys were in uh, Los Angeles. I wouldn't. We didn't know it either. We just know he had been. We knew that Cleveland had been nominated, and he's. I. I said, well, I'm going because I was working at CBS at the time, and he mm-hmm. said, oh, okay, well, if I win, I'll be on stage and wherever he was. He said, <laughs> here are the people, and so I just literally was right now. He said, thank my agent, thank this, thank that, and I said, okay, well, I'll let you know. When they called his name, it wasn't at the televised one. You know how they have the pre-show. Yeah. And when they called his name, and I was sitting at the table, the people didn't that I was sitting at the table, CBS folk, they didn't know that he was my brother. Mm. And so my husband and I, we were sitting there, and they called his name. And the Emmy goes to Cleavon Little. He was up against uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Um, you have to pull him up. There were four really big names. Yeah, yeah, you know. And so I just jumped up. And I did start running toward the stage, you know. Yes. And my husband said that the people at the table were looking, saying, is she okay with me? He said, that's her brother. What? You know, they were like shocked. That's her brother? I said, yeah. And so he said, girl, when you were running, and my husband because I had on this outfit that had blinging with silver and copper and and all kind of and he said the when the light when you when the light hit you it was like popping off the see he said girl you were popping he said then your your hair my real hair Mm. your hair was just (laughs) (laughs) flowing that you had (laughs) give me that disclaimer right right (laughs) Was well, real hair this time. This is, this is my hair, yeah, right. So that was a great. And when I got up there, and I'm like, okay, um, he told me, and I had my paper, everything ready, and I read it off. And then they take you behind stage to take your pictures. I have that that picture. And then when he passed, that was one thing. The family said, "Well, you the one that received. You need to keep his his Emmy." So, um, yeah, Emmy, because I want to say Grammy, but that's music. Yeah, yeah, that's music, music, television. Yeah. So that that's kind of. Kind of that, yeah. He's done some. So he did a Tales from the Crypt, also. I'm trying to remember. I remember did that. I see that one or not? I, I know there was the HBO. Suit. Yeah, that was on HBO yeah. at the time. So at, yeah. that, at that time, at that time, well, I think it was on regular TV when he did it. It was. Uh, I want to say they syndicated it out. So I know that the first run of it was, mm. was HBO, I believe. And oh, then it, okay. Because it, it, it did become a popular enough show. Mm-hmm. To where it could kind of 
takes into I mean, they made a kids version of that, if you can believe it. Is that there, yes? There's an animated. It, it, they had to change the name, and of course mm-hmm. they dumb it down. Right, right. But it's Tales from the Crypt Keeper. I remember that. Yes, opposed to Tales from the Crypt, and it's just right. a, like, how do you make a Saturday morning cartoon? Or who's the audience for this? Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the first time I saw it, which was this odd thing, ironic was not ironic, which was odd, was when my brother passed when he died. Uh, colon cancer, since we're talking about him, it was colon cancer. And he came, he was living in New York, and when it all hit, he wanted to come home. Home was Los Angeles, where all the sisters and brothers and all of us were there. And then my, my mom had already passed, but my dad was was still living at the time, and he had remarried. But he wanted to be close to family because he knew that this was going on, you Living know. It. So um, when we had his... Uh, celebration of life, which he was cremated. We had a big picture of him, and it was like packed up in there. I saw people that I had to look back because I was so out of it. Look back at the guest book, and I said, Al Pacino was there. I mean, people like that. Sidney Poitier was there, and um, uh, the young man, who's not young now, the man that's married to Beyonce's mom. Um, Richard, wait, you know, you can picture him, but you know, uh, the man who's married to Tina Knowles. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so there were just tons of folk in there. And I remember that when I got home after the repass, the repass, and I just couldn't sleep that night. And I got up in the middle of the night and I went into the den and I turned on the TV why was it the episode that he was in? This was the the, the night or the, the early morning the next day from his that he was in, and I'd never seen that before. And I'm looking and I'm bawling my eyes out. But the worst part about it, not to sound cryptic, cryptic or morbid, was he died in that particular episode, and it showed him in a coffin, uh-huh. and I, I'm like. And I lost it. Not, not good timing for that particular episode to air. Bad timing, bad timing. But I said all that. I say that's when I first saw that. But he's done some amazing stuff. He was amazing on stage and amazing on secret. Uh, not secret, but uh, separate, but not equal. Mm. Sidney Portier started in that, and Cleveland played his. He was a lawyer. Sidney was a lawyer, I think. Was it Thurgood Marshall? I think that might have been about Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall, but anyway. So that's that about him. You want to know about him? I told you. I gave you a whole chapter. You, you did, and he, and he certainly has a a grand scale of work mm-hmm. to have stood on. I mean, he just went down stage, played television, movies, and you know the funny thing is, is that almost any TV show during that period, which would have been considered low viewing mm-hmm. would be like a monster success now you know it <laughs> that's like <laughs> almost oh, any show that you could pick out that, that they claim did not have enough people watching today would be considered oh. a massive success the whoopee one whoopee because they probably had a good five million people watching at least at least at least and that was considered low that crazy? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Not a happy if they get like nine hundred thousand to a million people. You know. It's, yeah, the way the streaming streaming now is it's so fragmented now. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Yes. So. Yes. But you know, I I got to ask before I go off into you know you almost do for uh, random questions, uh, but I forgot to ask you know the, the in inspiration that your brother had towards your career because clearly he you know touched a lot of people mm-hmm. you just talked about the names that showed up at his celebration of life you know mm-hmm. your Al Pacino's and, mm-hmm. and Sidney Poitier's I mean these are massive heavy hitters right you know and he interacted with worked with converse the mm-hmm. tv shows plays movies with all these people mm-hmm. and in some cases some of them never worked with him they just know him from that thing and he was right inspirational Mm-hmm. So we're gonna take that inspiration. Did that put you know some steam in your engine, so to speak? Like, 
hey, he, I need to get up there too. Right, right. It did. It did all of that because um, we were very close. He was my best friend. Mm-hmm. Um, not only my brother, but I can really say, and a lot of siblings can say that about their siblings, a best friend. And like my, I have a, another sister and two other brothers. One of them has gone, the other one has gone home to be with the Lord. So there's two brothers gone. Mm-hmm. And, but it was because we were saying in the same industry as well my brother and I. So when he he saw, when we go back to when we first started talking, you and I first started talking, he saw all of that in me as well. That which I didn't probably miss, he could see, because he had the entertainment, he had that bug in him too. Mm -hmm. And he saw it in me. And when he went away, um, you know, and I, you know, I idolized him. He wasn't doing a whole lot of stuff in San Diego, uh, where we were, I was born, he was born in Chickasha, Oklahoma, but my mom and dad and all the rest, they finally just planted in uh, San Diego. Okay. And that's where I was born and my um, sister was born. But he really, when he got in, he was doing stuff like me in junior high school, high school, doing all that, you know, on stage, anything that he'd auditioned for, like myself, for a school play. We'd book the lead, we'd do it, we'd do it. If it called for a different race, uh, if it was, we'd get it because we were just good, Mm -hmm. you know, and I said, oh, she'd be so good now. We just sort of tweak the script a little bit or whatever. But that all being said, um, he was a great, uh, he was the magic carpet that helped to lift me and to continue to to do. I missed a couple of, spots along the way riding on the the magic carpet because Mm -hmm. he when I graduated from high school he wanted me to come to New York because that's where he ended up landing when he won the scholarship from ABC they had a talent search and if you won the scholarship I mean if you won the talent search you got a scholarship to go to was it the American Dramatic Academy or Juilliard? One of those or the other, but that, and he won. Okay. So he left, you know, and went on to uh, to New York and started his life there. Um, but when I graduated from high school, he wanted me to come to New York and live. And he said he would take care of, he, he wanted me to go to Juilliard, the top in the nation school. And why do we get our noses open so wide? We think we are in love. And I did not want to leave. Because we're in love. That's, you know, and it can make you do some... Foolish things. That's a yes, good title for a song. It's a good title for a movie, Foolish Things. Yeah. Because, because and who can't relate to that? I don't even remember who sang the song, but everybody, everybody plays the fool. Everybody plays. I'm trying to think. Right, right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who's we, we, we all know the song, and and as for whatever year that came out, yeah. it has never not been relevant. You are right. <laughs> so that was in that space. All them songs were mm-hmm. right, right here, and so I didn't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Cooper Gooden Jr.'s father. Who's that? The main ingredient. Oh, oh, oh! I thought you. Ah, that, that was the that was the name of the group. Mm-hmm. And the disembodied voice said it was the main ingredient. Right, and the disembodied everybody play, look up. Uh, uh, love makes you do foolish things. Sit alone by the phone. Oh, what? Do, 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 do. He, he's gonna so find that. You, 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 uh, you lived these uh, these uh, moments. Uh, that that uh, was and sang those so those songs. So, at least that one. So, love makes you do foolish. So, so you may have to be speaking to some young lady. <laughs> right. Don't don't don't. I'm sorry. I had to, all right. So you may have to be speaking to some young lady out there right, right. now. Who, or some young man. Oh, so, well, that's true. Or some young man. Yeah. Martha who, and the okay. Yep. Martha and the Van, you, you, Vandels. Vandels. Van, Vandel, Vandel, no, I think it's Martha and the Vandellas. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, you never heard. Of, yeah, love make love makes you do foolish things. So, so I turned. I said, I don't, he said, I will take care of you. And so my mom and dad were not encouraging it. Mm-hmm. I think if my mom and dad had have gotten behind it and said, yeah, honey, just go. You extra you know, push that push, you needed. But they was loving the fact at that time that I was in love, that I didn't want to leave because they didn't want their baby girl going to New York. What? We didn't even want our son to go to New York. So, so we're going to 
navigate this minefield pretty carefully because certainly we don't want to tell anybody to give up on love, but consider the options mm -hmm. very carefully. Right. Uh, because the situation you're describing is certainly you're not the first, not the last, mm -hmm. who had gone through that where love altered their decision. Mm-hmm. For what they might have, you know, what, you clearly had an open door. Your brother was right. rolling out the red carpet. Right. But at that time, that was just not the thing for you to do. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I know. It, it, it had, well, look, I'm sure if we sat here trading up the decisions made by, you know, a significant other at the time mm -hmm. who may mm -hmm. not even exist in your life anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can raise my hand for that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, made some bad choices based off of that, as we all do. So I guess the, the advice here is give that a little thought. I, I, navigate the mind feel a tad. Well, let me, let me navigate it. If you know that you are uh, uh, gifted, talented, you've got all this that you're pursuing in life. I'm, I'm starting you before that person comes into your life mm -hmm. um, you want to be very careful with your choices in relationships be it a, a partner significant other husband whoever who you courting who you dating <laughs> you know they, they get on both sides I'm talking to men and women you got to come with your own mental your own the resume that you want now you're not going to meet up we're not going to be perfect None of us are going to, you're not going to find that perfect one because in most cases, that's why there's cheating on the women for the women and men because you just didn't get everything. Now, this one's got mostly all that I need, but he or she is missing this. And then you, somebody rolls up and you're like, oh, well, he's got more, mm -hmm. but he don't have it all. This one over here communicates with me. He and then you start getting in trouble there. You know, you start getting your mind all, but that's a whole nother thing. I learned that, something that, from that's my That's life brother. advice. That, that, yeah. That's not just acting advice. That, that's life advice. That's life advice. So make sure that you know and you know what you want to do in life and you know where the success of that that you're pursuing, where it could take you. So when you're in that dating state, you have to be very careful and pay attention and hopefully get when you're looking into the eyes and having conversation and communication with that that man or with that woman you want to both be you want to be on the same page now they can fake it until they make it they can try to front you and make you think but you got to get deep and you got to really know that you know down in your knower that when you say these are the things honey that I'm just like with my husband my husband that I'm married this is the second time around but he already knew what I was doing when he was dating me so uh, you got to know that you ain't going to try to control this <laughs> when, uh, if we hook up. I didn't say that to him, mm. but he already but, knew. But he got the message somehow right. through osmosis. Right. And so even we've had our struggles with him still knowing We've had the struggles that we've had after 42 years of being married. The struggles that we've had is, especially when I would travel a lot for ministry as well, because he knew I was doing that. So I would, would be gone for a couple of days, and it might be three times out of a month that I'm on a plane and I'm going. And he can't go because you got to hold down the, the fort. You're holding the job down, especially when we started having, well, we had a daughter. My oldest daughter was two when he married me. So you, we're we doing this. I was a good mother. I'm not saying that I, but I was doing what I was doing, yeah. you know. And so um, there would, like I said, would be times where, and it, I could say some of it was my fault, where I'm just tired. I'm tired when I get back from a trip or something. It's the balances of life. Right. Like that, that TikTok that, thing I told you all about yeah. earlier today, I don't know, <laughs> where it's just, well, you present the question, you present, and I could put one up and tell you how I might have been feeling that day. Mm. Um, what, is your, why, what is your response when your husband says he's not getting enough attention and he needs your attention? 
I don't want to. I don't feel like it. That's this TikTok yeah. that says, I, just, I don't want to. Yeah. And then that's again, a TikTok, but that's how you're feeling. That's how they're to. feeling. So there would be times with that rough spot along the way where um, he'd say, I just feel like, you know, I'm the third will. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm, t- yeah, I know that, but. Da, 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 da. So there were those times. Well, maybe you just need to kind of give up something over. Mm, giving up, doing this, blah 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 blah. You know, this sounds like this. We need to make this a, a, a future discussion. A part two. The, okay. uh, I mean, because that you've hit on so many things that actors are either going to get into, mm-hmm. deal with, mm-hmm. or or dealing with now, <laughs> in that. If you're going into some sort of creative slash artistic endeavor, whatever that may be, and then it doesn't necessarily have to fall onto acting, but Mm -hmm. it takes someone who is exceptionally understanding on Mm -hmm. the other side of that Mm -hmm. to deal with it. Mm -hmm. For whatever reasons, this is long hours, is you dealing with the most gorgeous of the gorgeous on the day-to-day basis mm-hmm. is you not even being in the state is, you know, um, I can't come home and cook. I, I got this and I know we was planning on going there tomorrow, but you know, they just called me and I, it's any number of things and they have to be absolutely understanding to that. And mm-hmm. only people who are in that kind of creative field mm-hmm. really feel the pain mm-hmm. of how that can stress you. You and or your family. I mean that. I'm just gonna go ahead and say now. Yeah, that needs to be a, a conversation all to itself. I didn't even act, at, but mm-hmm. me just doing video work, mm-hmm. running out every minute. Like you got to go do another one of those now. Yeah, this is what I signed up for. Yeah, and that's why I love doing this. What we're supposed to compliment? We're we're partners. We're supposed to be doing this and the the hard part about it is is when you've already um married someone and you were then you discover these gifts down in you Mm -hmm. and you and And but but you didn't come he didn't sign up for that he didn't or she didn't sign up for that and then all of a sudden it's like the women that i know that uh get married and they have this man i actually did a, a movie with keith robin uh robinson and i forgot who else was in there um anyway um it was called um something about love but he was a big time executive lawyer and then he felt the calling of god on his life to be a pastor mm-hmm. she the wife was a lawyer too so they were both in the same business they they doing well they know and he just felt this calling and this pull and he comes home to tell her i just you know this has been i haven't talked to you about but i need to talk to you babe about this and blah 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 this and he goes on and he says i'm believe i've been called to the ministry and i'm i remember them lines like we did that thing over 20 something years ago Mm. and she said who called you? <laughs> yeah. Who called you? What do you mean who called me? God, I really feel the calling on my heart. Well, you you need to go back. You need you need to go and make sure that call was for you. Cuz I don't even know what you're talking about. You're going I just need to do this. And so then that's the hard part. It's the hard part. When you didn't sign up for that, when we came, when I came into this marriage, you were doing this, you were making six figures and doing this, and we live in large, and now you're about to tell me you're going to go trying to collect love offerings to get an uh, an offering, so we got to pay this mortgage and all stuff, and it eventually, it turned around to be... um, a good you know, redemptive at the end but 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 it, the, it makes the point yeah that, that that's the point yeah it's not easy so you have to communication is vital that's why i said i'm starting from the beginning when you don't have no you don't have no boyfriend you don't have no booth thing right now <laughs> and so and you're trying to connect with the, the booth thing i'm talking to men and women mm. because i've heard men say man i need to talk to you about something you know my I'm doing, my wife knows what I'm doing, but 
now she's like, she's so clean. Because I have scenes where somebody's playing my, my wife. And I might not even be in bed with her. Or I might not even have to kiss her. Or I may not. But it's just but the fact that I'm to with touch her. A nerve. Right. And she's like, well, I'm going to be on set every day. I'm going to be. And he's like, <laughs> hey, you do can't that. do that. Because they don't just let everybody come up. Well, why? What's, what's going on that I can't see what's going on? So, and he was just so broken with that. And I said, man, I said, were you doing this before you guys? No, but when I started doing it, she was all into it. Oh, this is great. And, she was, and then when I started booking, I started getting uh, stuff, then it was like a whole different story. I said, well, the one side of it I understand, but you have to have a, a relationship. Like when I started doing stage plays, I'm yeah. pushing there because I have my little... Oh, okay. um, my um, the first role that I got cast in when I say role on my first stage play and it was a big stage in Los Angeles mm. a big stage play and the man it was called A Taste of Life and I was married and this man had to, to kiss me because there was a point where I was distraught because our daughter got uh, pregnant by a gangster and he was a drug dealer and da 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 and all that and so in this particular scene, he has to embrace me and then he has to kiss me, mm -hmm. you know, just to comfort me because we, he just said, let's go for a walk, let's go down to the park. Let's, and so we, there's a scene where the instructions are, he takes my face and he kisses me and he starts to sing it because it was a musical. It's a taste of life and it ain't always easy and he's singing that and we're just, so I felt the need to tell my husband who already knew the things that I was doing but it hadn't got to that point where somebody was supposed to be kissing me. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just want to let you know, I said, um, in this, that this play, this guy, stage play, he's going to kiss me. He, where are you going to kiss you? My husband. <laughs> I said, it's just a quick, it's not like an emotional, passionate, and we end up in the sack. It's just mm -hmm. him just comforting me, and he takes my face. I show my husband, he takes my face, and he just kisses me like that. <laughs> I can't kiss you on the cheek. That ain't uh, happening. Uh, That's what he said. He didn't even oh, give me wow. the cheek option. <laughs> he said, that ain't happening. I said, well, there has to. Okay. So I went back and told the guy who was mad. I said, mm. ain't happening. Don't kiss me in the mouth. Said, what are you talking about my husband? Said, and my husband is going to be, trust me, he sits whenever I do, whatever I do. He's going to be right on that front row. And our scene is right on that stage. And he's going to be looking just like this. So I don't need you. No, just don't. I'll figure it out. He said, Deny. so he, what he ended up doing is kissing me on the forehead. He didn't uh, even get anywhere near yeah. here because I didn't know what he was going to do if it was just going to be a little hug. And, and so he just, he just, he did hold my face and then he tilted my head and kissed me on the forehead. So, 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 <laughs> so he, he, he worked around. <laughs> yeah, he was looking and I didn't, we didn't say anything. We didn't talk about it. Now fast forward. Was he? Um, that's kind of how he sits, though. <laughs> what you doing up there? <laughs> what up? What up up there? What up? No, he didn't even. He was looking. He's one. He kind of sits like on the edges. You know how you guys kind of sit on the edge of the seat and you might yeah. be kind of leaned over. It was like. That's I'm getting ready for action too. pose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so ready to leap up at a right. moment's notice. <laughs> right. Cut. I, I didn't even. <laughs> Stop this play right. right now. Get your clothes. Get, your, get, get, get dressed. Get out that wardrobe thing. Come right. on. Let's go home. But he, he would never. You think back there, he probably would have cut up a little bit like that. Oh. But anyway, uh, <laughs> he wouldn't hurt, hurt nobody. Mm, but you but, know, but it might have a minor scene. Yeah, but, <laughs> that wasn't written. Might have happened. Right, exactly. Me, my wife's. <laughs> I, I just I knew that was gonna come out of some. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's a whole nother workshop. We'll it talk about it another time. I was in. My but yes. right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. So there's we, something different, but, uh. right? <laughs> well, so we fast forward to to now in the same marriage. My f the first movie that I did, not the first one that I did, but the about the third movie in from the Chandler family, uh, Christmas that whole thing with Greg Allen. Mm. The writer wanted to kind of shift the attention on now the senior couple to show that within the series that seniors can have be still passionate and still touchy touchy still have love and so she really put the emphasis on hi him and I in this one and there was kiss there was going to be some sugar yeah. and so um I said to my husband I said okay look at Greg is going to kiss me 
Okay. So he finished whatever he was doing, and I was like, okay, I don't like that quick okay, because I didn't get that quick okay when I told him. So we went on, went on. A couple. Of, I just want to let you know, I told you, but I'm going to let you know that Greg kisses me. That's not just one kiss. Okay. By the time I got to the third time, he said, why do you keep telling me this? Well, make sure you understand it. <laughs> and what I had to do, I had to take him back. I said, when the first play that I did and I had to kiss, I forgot the guy's name, Charles, I think, kiss him in this play. And you said, uh, uh-uh, that ain't happening. He said, that was then. This is, this is now. If I'm not confident enough or secure enough in my marriage, because we were freshly, we were like newlies. At, at that time. Yeah. Fresh. But now he's grown into the right the role of the uh, showbiz husband. Right. I guess if we're gonna call it that. So, but there were some rocky, and he was so. Remember, young or middle age or wherever you are, if you don't have a, a significant other, um, your husband, somebody in your life, make sure that they are clear about that. Make sure they're very clear. That I don't know where this is going to lead me, but I'm, I'm believing it's going to be successful. And I may be on the go, or I may be on set. You get a call time at 6 a.m. in the morning. Our voice over here. What did you call? What did you call, Jay? Oh, the disembodied voice. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. You may have. Speak to me, spirit. Right. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, go ahead. That's... Okay, so you may have a 6 a.m. call time. And you may not get home until, ten, you may not get wrapped until 10 p.m., depending on what they're trying to do. And so you you got to know, and he has to know, or she has to know, don't be blowing up my phone. If I leave the house, <laughs> I have to be at 6 a.m. And, and I'm, let me call you when I'm finished. And my husband had to learn that early because not that he was trying to check on me. Hmm. He was trying to check on me, but not in the sense of he wasn't familiar with on-set stuff. He didn't understand it. So, okay, you had a call time at 6 a.m., and why do you think I'm not going to be concerned about you when it's 8 p.m., and I haven't heard from you or anything? I'm going to call the phone. I'm going to call you. And then if you can text or just say, I said, well, okay, and then as we've grown and we good now, we it's just like, he'll say, call me when, you, call me when you're on the road. So I can, <laughs> if I'm sleeping. So sleep, you got used to it now. Right, right. And then sometimes, and so much so where sometimes I call, you ain't picked up the phone. Where you at? <laughs> what you doing? Uh, what, not, huh? It turns in reverse. <laughs> you <ain't> answer me? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, But, they, but yeah. they all get the, the idea that doing, you know, a creative endeavor, having someone who is outside of that bubble, not always easy. Right. So if that's the challenge that you want to deal with and you're just going to still hold on to each other and not going to divorce each other over the fact and they're going to still let you do if this is what you passionately want to do. I'm talking to single women. You don't have your boot thing yet. You're on the lookout. You're taking resumes, whatever you're doing. You better know that even with those who are the best of them, you know, and supportive like, you know, my husband is and some of you have those same people in your life. It still can get a little a little bumpy along the way, yeah. and that's not necessarily anything against them. It's just you're dealing with an environment that the average person doesn't have to deal with, and mm-hmm. they just they don't understand it. That's, right. that's the best way they they don't understand mm-hmm. the things that go into that. So as we are going to wrap this up, I've given her the random questions. We've heard the unloved uh, story, and she gave a lot of nuggets of wisdom to you actors, along with illustrating that with uh, segments of her personal career. Uh, how can people follow you and see you at work or see you socially okay. in, a, in a virtual setting, that is? Um, well, all of my handles um, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and TikTok, um, and LinkedIn, or it's my name, just at, it's Dieta West, and that's D-E-E-T-T-A-W-E-S-T, that's me, at Dieta West. Uh, you can Google Dieta West if you're trying to figure out who, I'm, who I am, that doesn't really tell you 
who I am. It just tells you what I do. I am a child of the Most High God. And I, um, I can give you who I am as opposed to who I, but I, we don't have time for that. We'll do that another time. <laughs> so those are my handles. All right. And of course, if you are looking to follow this on as many platforms, because I'm sure you are going to be going right here, looking up Waywork Studios, sorry, and the Thinking Out Loud Network, which you can find this podcast amongst many others on greater podcast platforms. You can see me. I know I don't have a personal IG that I uh, filtered through, but I do movies and stuff. So if you want to uh, follow me on anything, follow me on that. It is me. It's just, you know, random little movie fact toys that I like to toss out every once in a while. So you can do that if you're a pro wrestling fan. Then you can go to WPNWrestling.com and you can follow me on that also. Tales from the Grip podcast. Make sure you follow this one because we now have an Instagram and you're going to get into the movies. If you're going to make a movie, you're going to write a script, you're going to do this thing that we call the movie business, then you need to make sure that you get a grip. This episode of Tales from the Grip is brought to you by the Colonel's Gold's Pop Popcorn, which you can find at the Colonel, spelled like you do the Colonel, not the, the military rank, but Colonel of Colonel of Corn, K E R. N-E-L. Yeah, my spelling's bad sometimes. But anyway, don't worry about my spelling. Worry about what flavors you can get when you go to the Colonel Goes Pop Popcorn Kettle Corn Gourmet Style. Brought to you out of Atlanta. Ships anywhere. You can get stuff like yellow cheddar, strawberry banana, which I never thought would have been a flavor, but it is. It's true. It works. Uh, cheddar sriracha, which I had, which is delicious. And my kids actually ate it up before I could finish it all. A Cajun caramel, cheddar sriracha caramel Parmesan garlic, which I also had, and I found that in my son's trash can when I, uh, and I mean, he the empty bag, he <laughs> tore right through it, just <laughs> didn't, and I'm glad I had the chance to taste some of it before I left out of this building. Anyway, the point being is that if you're going to sit there and you're going to have some popcorn, you might as well go gourmet, go all the way, and if you're going to go gourmet, go for the Colonel Goes Pop, remember the Colonel Goes Pop is the website goes everywhere just because you're not in Atlanta does not mean that you can't get it ships out to you and you can enjoy this just like you would any other movie night grab yourself a soda get yourself a gourmet popcorn and support him and the show with the Colonel Goes Pop Tales from the Grip Podcast if you're gonna make a movie then you need to get a grip you need to get a grip